Hi everyone. In this video, we are discussing problem number 55, jump game. It's a medium level problem from lead code. And let's read the problem statement. The description goes like this. You are given an integer array nums. And we are initially positioned at the array's first index. We can take it to be zero indexed array only, it doesn't matter. And each element in that particular array represents the maximum jump length at that particular position. So I'll explain what it means using the following examples. And our objective is to return true. We have to return the Boolean true if it is possible to make it to the last index of the array and we have to return false otherwise. Okay, so what it means. So they have given some examples. Let's go through the examples and that apart, we will check our own examples to understand uh, the problem better to come up with a better strategy to solve the problem. Example number one. So this is the given array of integers. There are just five numbers here, two, three, one, one, four. Okay, and we have to return the Boolean true. Okay, so what is the meaning of it? They have given this explanation. So the idea is this, at the zeroth index, the number is two. It means from here, we can make a maximum jump of two units. For example, we can land here which is the 0, 1, 2, second index, which is the number one. So this is where we can land. Now from here, we can make a maximum jump of one unit and we can land here. And from here, we can make a maximum jump of one unit and we will land here. That is the, the last index of this array, right? So it's possible for us to jump all the way from the left index, the starting index, to the very last index of this particular array it's possible to reach the last index. Then we will have to return the Boolean true. Okay, wherever it is not possible, by the way, this is not the only way you can do these series of jumps. There are multiple ways we can jump, right? So please understand the number given here is not the jump length, it's the maximum jump length. So if you see two here, it's not necessary that you will have to make a jump of two units. You can also jump one unit. That's absolutely fine, right? This is the maximum jump length. So Instead of jumping two units, we could have just jumped one unit here and we will end up here. And from here, we can jump three units and directly reach the last index. So this is another way of uh, jumping our way from the zeroth index to the very last index. So the solution is not unique. In the sense, the, the series of jumps is not unique. We can have multiple jumps. That is not the problem. The problem is to figure out whether we can jump our way from the zeroth index to the very last index, right? Okay, check the second example. So here we are given an array of integers, three, two, one, zero, four. We start at this particular index as always. This is where we are and this is where we need to reach, okay? So this is where we are. What if we make a jump of three units? We will land here, we'll land here, zeroth index. And it's not a very good idea because once you land here, the moment you see the number zero, it means we are allowed to do a maximum jump of length zero. It means we're not allowed to jump. So we are trapped here at that, that, that particular index. We are trapped. We cannot move any further. So there is no way you can reach the last index. Okay. So maybe this particular jump failed. Maybe there are other ways of uh, jumping our way to the last index. So let's check. So I'm not going from three to zero. I'm not making a jump of length three. Let me make a jump of length two. We will land here. What about this? After you land here, we are allowed to do a maximum jump of one unit. So we will end up here. Once again, we are trapped. So it's not a good idea. Okay. Again, I'm going back to the beginning. We saw that if we jump three units, it's a problem, right? If we j uh, jump one unit, again, it's a problem. Okay. Eventually we'll get entrapped in this particular index. Okay. So I'm just now jumping one unit and we will end up here. Now, right here, once you're in this particular index, you're allowed to jump maximum of two units. If you jump two units, you will be caught in this particular index. Same problem as that of the previous uh, index. Or if you just jump one unit again, you will have to eventually go to this index where there is number zero, right? So there is no way we can make it to the last index here right? So we will have to return the Boolean false. This is the reasoning behind this particular example. 
okay and it's given that the length of the array can be anywhere ranging from 1 to 10,000 10 power 4 that is and each and every element in that particular array can range anywhere from 0 to 10 power 5 right so 0 is the least number of course we cannot have negative number we, we cannot do negative jumps right it's not like we are jumping backwards or anything right we are always jumping forward in the sense like we are jumping from left to right okay so 0 is the least it can get in the sense we cannot jump at all right that's the worst case scenario okay so this is the problem statement let's uh, now head over to the whiteboard to come up with a strategy to solve the problem so here i'm going to show you two examples and one of the example the numbers i've hidden for a reason i'll explain in a while so one of the examples i didn't hide anything like you can clearly see all the numbers so you know what kind of jumps to take so this is where we are initially zeroth index which is number three it means that we are allowed to do a maximum jump of length three units. Okay, so why not we just try that only? And where do we reach? We will end up here. We'll be at this particular index where the number is one, which means we are allowed to do a jump of maximum one unit, which means we'll end up here. And the number here is four, which means we are allowed to do a jump of maximum four units so we don't even have to go that far like we don't have room to go that far so anyways our uh, aim is to reach the end of the list and we can very well reach the end of the list by taking a jump of length two that's it okay so like i told you before this is not the only way you can go from the very first to the very last index there are different ways you can jump and go from the leftmost to the rightmost index there are multiple solutions multiple ways of jumping and reaching the end of list so that is not the problem Okay, so we can clearly see it works and we will have to return the boolean true. The reason why I've hidden the second example is because in the first example, we are able to easily come up with this particular solution just because we have a full picture of the array, right? When we have the complete picture, we like sometimes fail to think programmatically. We are, we are not able to think uh, algorithmically, right? So that is what we are trying to develop here using the second example. You see, in the first example, it looks like it's a good idea to jump to the maximum possible extent at any given point. It looks like a good idea because it works, right? So let's check the second example where I'm going to reveal the numbers one by one, right? So let's see if the same strategy will help us, okay? Let's move this particular bar to reveal the numbers one by one. The first number is three. We are at the zeroth index and the number is three. So it looks like it's a good idea to jump three units. I don't want to mark anything here because the rest of the numbers are hidden. We'll discuss that. Now let me reveal the next number, which is two. Even here, imagine we are not taking the longest jump. For some reason, we ended up here. Then even here, it looks like it's okay to take the longest possible jump, which is two units. It looks like, let's see. Now let me reveal the next number, which is three. Okay same story at any given point wherever we are we are going to take the longest possible jump so that way we can reach the end of list very quickly right so now i'm revealing its next number which is zero okay so now you can kind of get some idea when we were at this particular index the zeroth index we thought it's a good idea to jump three units so had we done that we would have entrapped ourselves in this particular index. Then you cannot move forward at all. No more jumps because zero there is, right? Okay, so this is a wrong idea. And I told you that even by chance, somehow we ended up here. Like, you know, initially we didn't uh, want to jump three units. And for some reason, whatever reason, we want to go to this particular index. And that particular index, I told you, okay, let's make the maximum jump. Again, we have the same issue will be caught in this particular index, which is not a good idea. Okay, let's reveal other numbers and see how it works, right? Check the next one, which is two, fine. Let me show you the remaining numbers, all the numbers, okay? So now that I think you should have got some idea what I'm trying to convey. So let me reveal all the numbers one by one. That's it. This is our complete list of numbers. Now let's analyze this problem once again, because now we have a complete picture. Let's analyze our problem once again. This is where we are zeroth index so like i told you had we taken this jump of three units done we cannot 
proceed further not a good idea fine okay what if uh, we jumped only two units and this is where we end up right and right here imagine we took the decision of jumping the maximum possible length which is three units once again, we would have entrapped ourselves in another zero. It's a different zero. It's a different, different trap, right? Again, it's a bad idea. Do you get this? Okay. So what we should have done after you reach here, instead of jumping the maximum length, which is three that is allowed for this particular index, let's jump only two units, which is this one and we'll be reaching here. And once you reach here, now you jump another two units. That way we can reach the end of list i don't know if you realize that there are plenty of traps even though there are two zeros here the number of traps are not just counted by number of zeros it's counted by how many indices are there that are leading us to zeros so that way we have way too many traps in this particular problem for example at this particular index had i taken this jump it's a trap okay in this index had i taken this decision of jumping maximum length again we get ourselves entrapped okay in this particular index had we decided to jump maximum length we'll get ourselves entrapped okay even if you jump one unit again we'll get entrapped so the only way we can solve this problem is to go from this index to this index that way we can get to the end of the list do you get this so we have way too many traps in this particular problem right so one thing is absolutely clear it's not a very good idea to always take the longest stride so in this particular problem, this is a good solution. So this way we can cross the bridge. This way we can go from the zeroth index to the very last index, right? So what is the strategy then? So how else we can solve the problem? Here, the technique is to backtrack, okay? So let's not think from left to right. Let's think from right to left because our aim is to somehow get to the right end the very last index that is our aim so is that aim achievable or not is that particular goal achievable or not is our question so let's backtrack let's not go forward let's go backward okay so this is the way we should look at this problem our end goal is to reach here fine this is where we need to reach now we ask ourselves this question we are we're going to keep moving back one step at a time right just one step at a time we keep moving back so we ask ourselves this question, if we were in this index, is there any way we could have reached the end? Impossible because the value at this particular index is zero in the sense we cannot jump at all. So this is not a useful index. Okay. So ignore that. Okay. Now we move one unit left. Imagine we were in this index. We're not worried as of now. We're not worried about, is there any way of reaching this particular index? That is not the question. Imagine we were in this particular index. Is there any way we can reach the end of the list? Yeah, we can. Because what is this number here? Two, right? In the sense, we are allowed to jump two units max, right? And we can reach the end of list. Fine. Okay. So this works. Okay. Now we are going to look at this number or this particular index uh, as our aim, our goal. Is there any way we can reach this particular index? That is our question. Okay, so previously we were wondering like, is there any way we can reach this particular index, right? Now that problem gets reduced to this problem. Is there any way we can reach this particular index, right? Because as long as you can reach this index, it's guaranteed that we'll be reaching the end of list. So now our focus is on this one. So this is what we are going to treat as end of list. Okay, so can you reach this particular index? Okay, again, the same logic, you keep moving one number at a time to the left, right? We keep moving to the left one number at a time. Okay. So we were in this index. Can you reach this? Impossible because there is zero. It's not going to work. We were in this index. Can you reach this? This is our new last index. Okay. We treat this as the last. Got it. So we are at this particular index. Can you reach this? Definitely because look at this. The number is three. You can jump a maximum of three units. So this gap itself is after all two units. So yeah, we can reach this. No problem at all, right? Okay, so now again, we are shifting our focus to this index because now that we have an assurance that as long as we can reach this index, it's guaranteed that we'll be reaching this index and eventually the end of list. 
So our focus is on this. So it's like every time we are updating our last index. Okay, originally this is our last index. That is actually the last index. And then we shifted our focus to this. Now we treated this as our last index. Now from there we are shifting our focus to this. Now we are treating this as our last index. Okay, so again the same question. We keep moving one number at a time to the left. So imagine we were here. Is there any ways we can reach this? Yes, we can. The number is two. Okay, as long as that number at that particular index is greater than the gap between these two indices. Greater than or even equal to is fine. Okay, so as long as that particular number at that particular index, right, is greater than or equal to the gap between these two indices, it works. We will, we will always be able to jump, right? Again, shifting our focus to this index. Because as long as you can reach here, you can reach here. That's the idea. Now, can you reach here? Repeat the story. Go one number left, right? Which is three. Okay. Yeah, we can reach. No issue. Did you get this? Okay. So I'll give you an example where it is not going to work. Okay. Now check this particular example where I came up with an array of numbers where it is not going to work. There is no way we can go from the leftmost index to the rightmost index. So here we are going to check if our method, the backtracking uh, method is going to help us identify that it's impossible to go from left to right. Okay. Let's check that. So backtracking is what we are doing here. So this is where we need to reach and we keep moving one index at a time towards the left, right? So imagine we were here. Is there any way we can reach this index? Impossible zero. The moment you are at zero, that's it. We cannot move. Okay. So keep moving left one number at a time. Okay. Imagine we were here. So is there any way we can reach the end of list, which is this index? Yes, we can because look at this number two in the sense we are allowed to make a maximum jump of two units. Like I told you the number at any given index, if it is greater than or at least equal to the gap, then it is going to work, right? Okay. So we are shifting our focus to this index because as long as we can reach here, we can reach here, right? So this is our new last index. We are going to treat this as our new last index. Okay. So keep moving left. If we were here, can you reach here? No. Further keep moving left. If we were here, can you reach here? Again, no. Because you can make a maximum jump of one unit. The moment you make a jump of one unit, we'll get ourselves entrapped. That's it. Okay. We can't do anything. Fine. Keep moving left. Okay. What if we were here? Can you somehow reach here? Impossible again. Okay, the number here at this particular index is two, but this jump is three units. So there is no way you can make it. And you cannot also make multiple jumps and somehow reach here. Okay, so you can't go like to this index and then somehow go to this index and this index. It's not going to work like that. Okay, if at all anything, you have to go from here to here directly because once you reach here or here, it is not going to work. We already know that. And there is no way you can directly go from this two to this two because the gap is three. Okay, it's not working. What if we were here? Again, it's not working, right? Our maximum jump is this. We can reach zero, which is a problem. Or if you take a jump of length two, we are reaching here one. Again, it's a problem. What if you make a jump of length one? Again, it's a problem because we just now saw that there is no way of going from this two to this two, right? Okay, so it's impossible to reach this particular index. Starting here, it's impossible to reach this particular index. So our backtracking method is also working even in these kind of examples where it is impossible to reach the last index, right? Okay, so backtracking algorithm it is. That is what we're going to use. So let's see how to code it out. Let's uh, whiteboard our code first and then we'll actually code it out in uh, lead code, right? Okay, the first thing that we're supposed to do is consider the last index, which is going to be length of nums. Nums is the name of the array that they're giving us. So length of nums, minus one because it is zero indexed array, right? So that is our last index, right? But like I told you, we keep updating our last. We'll get there, okay? Now we are introducing another variable. We call it move. And initially, we set its value as one. I'll explain what it means. I was explaining, right? During this backtracking method, I was explaining you that we keep moving left one unit at a time, one step at a time. So that is that move variable. Right, we are going to use that in order to keep moving left one step at a time. Okay, so that is the move variable. 
So now we are going to introduce a for loop for i in the range of length of nums minus 1. At any given step, we are going to check if nums of last minus move is greater than or equal to move. Okay, what it means, I'll explain. So what is the meaning of nums of last minus move? So please understand we have set last as length of nums minus 1, which is literally the last index. And we have initially set move as 1. So what is last minus move? It's going to be the last index is preceding index, right? So for example, in this particular example, you take length of nums is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Length of nums is 7. So 7 minus 1 is 6. Yeah, this is the sixth index because it is zero indexed. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. We are here. Okay. That is last. We have set move as 1, right? So last minus move is going to be here, over here. Now, what are we checking here? What condition are we checking here? The number at that particular index, last minus move is this index, the second from last. So the number at that particular index is it greater than or equal to move, right? Move is set as 1. So is this number greater than or equal to 1? It is not. So what is the message? It means that there is no way you can go from this index to this index. That is what it means. Had this been greater than or equal to move, in the sense, had this been greater than or equal to 1, if it is 1, if it is 2, if it is 10, no matter what, of course, we'll be able to jump from this index to this index. But right now, in this particular example, it's impossible, right? So this is what we check at any given step, right? So what are we supposed to do in a case like that? If it is actually possible to make that jump, what are we supposed to do? We are going to update our last index. If you are able to successfully jump, then our last index is not the actual last index. We are going to keep updating our last index like I have shown you in these previous examples, okay? So last index is defined to be last minus move and right here we are resetting the value of move as 1 and just in case you're wondering like why should we reset the value of move as 1 it's already set as 1 so why, like what do you mean by resetting you will understand that in a while okay check this whenever this condition is working that is when we update our last index as last minus move right? And we are resetting move as 1. Whenever this condition is not working, what are we supposed to do? If this condition is failing, like in this example, it is failing, right? Okay. This is the last index minus 1. This is the last index. This is the last index minus 1. And we clearly see that this condition is failing because nums at this particular index is 0, which is not greater than or equal to 1. This condition is failing. So we cannot make a jump from here to here. In that case, what are we supposed to do? Else, what are we supposed to do? We have to move, we have to keep moving one step at a time towards the left, okay? So it's established that we cannot jump from here to here. So we have to check whether we can jump from here to here. That is our next sensible question to ask. So we have to go to this index. How can you go to this index? By setting the value of move as two. In the sense, we keep incrementing the value of move by number one. Do you get this? We will keep incrementing the value of move by number one. Even if that is not working, it's going to work. But just for example's sake, imagine had this been zero. So even if this is not working, then what do we do? Again, we keep moving towards the left one step at a time. We will check whether we can jump from here to here. If that is failing, then again, we'll go left and check whether we can jump from here to here. So on. So we will have to constantly keep moving to the left. And that can be achieved by only incrementing the value of move. We are incrementing the value of move and please understand that we are subtracting that value of move from last. So it means that we are going left, right? We are traversing this list from right to left. And once we are done with this entire for loop, if we make it to the very first index, now how do we know that we made it to the very first index? Our last index, whatever initially we called as last, which is actually in literal sense the last index is now supposed to be the first index. If that is true, it means that we have actually made it from the very last index to the very first index by means of these jumps, the permissible jumps, right? 
in that case we will return true this backtracking method works we will return true otherwise of course we will have to return false did you understand this so you understood the meaning of this particular condition right this conditional statement why do we even have this condition last is equal to zero it means by means of backtracking we are able to reach the very first index that implies that we will be able to follow the rules of the jump game and go from the zeroth index to the last index if you can backtrack and go from last to first then you can go from first to last also right that's the idea okay so that is what we are checking here right so let's head over to lead code and check how our code is performing so what's the first thing we are supposed to do introduce the variable last which is in literal sense the last index of the given array of uh, integers which is called as nums and we introduce another variable move which is initially set to 1 and here we are creating a for loop and how many times we run the loop length of nums minus 1 that many times we run the loop and what are we doing in, inside this loop every single step we are going to check if nums of last minus move is greater than or equal to move what exactly are we checking in this particular condition this is the backtrack method so what exactly we are checking we are checking is it possible to jump from this index to the the current index under consideration that is what we are checking and whenever it is possible we update our last index to last minus move and we reset our value of move to one and I have explained what it means to say we are resetting the value okay because we are actually modifying the value of move when we are modifying and how we are modifying we are modifying the value of move every time this jump is failing every time the jump is failing we are moving one step to the left to see at least from there can you make a longer stride right so else in the sense whenever the jump is failing we keep moving right so how do you express that move is equal to move plus one right and finally what are we supposed to check we are supposed to check if the last what we are referring to as the last index if it is equal to the zeroth index it means we successfully backtrack our way from the last index to the zeroth index it means of course you should be also able to go forward so you can play this jump game right okay so whenever this condition is true we return true otherwise we return false so let's uh, let's run our code work let's see yeah it does now let's actually submit the code and see how it performs in various uh, test cases that's pretty good so speed is as usual good okay 90.75 and as usual the memory usage is not that very good but it's okay okay we usually optimize for the runtime of our code not so much for the memory usage of our code right so that's it I hope uh, this particular solution is clear. Thank you for watching.